Okay, so let us solve some problems related to assignment number two. Do you have any question for assignment number one before start talking about assignment number two? I have already posted the solutions for assignment number one. Any question? Okay, let us see assignment number two and the related problems. So if you try to go to assignment number two, I give you the first problem here, which is saying for the circuit shown in figure one, if the voltage source is substituted by a short circuit and the current source is substituted by an open circuit, can you please find the equivalent between A and B as if I'm asking you to find the total resistance? But I'm playing by the words. So instead of giving you direct example, I give you that example, then I give you current source and voltage source. And what I'm asking you about, I told you that this guy, I will replace it by short circuit, and this guy, I will replace it by open circuit. So I will redraw the circuit again and to try to find the equivalent between E and B. If you try to look to this circuit, you will find that these two are connected in parallel. These two are connected in parallel, but this is short circuit. So what's going to happen to this guy? It will be cancelled, or in other words, I don't need it anymore because of the short circuit. There is no current in this guy. So I can redraw that circuit and I'll be able to find the equivalent for that circuit. Similar to this one is this problem. It's similar to the assignment problem. I'm telling you the same story here. I'm saying for the circuit shown in figure one, if the voltage source is substituted by short circuit and the current source is substituted by an open circuit, find the equivalence between E and B. Actually, if you try to solve this problem, so let me uh, move this circuit away. Okay, that's fine. So for this circuit, I would like to find the equivalent between A and B. So tutorial two. Question number one. What I said, I'm going to substitute this guy by open circuit, and I'm going to substitute this guy by short circuit. So let me draw that circuit again. So if you try to redraw this circuit, it will look like that. This guy is B, this guy is A, this is 1, 11 ohm, this is 9 ohms, this is 5 ohms, this is 30, and this guy is 10 ohms. And then we have, this guy is open circuit, so I don't need it anymore. This guy is replaced by short circuit. Then I have resistor here, this guy is 15, and then this guy is 16, and I have here 4 ohms. This is what you are going to do for problem number one in assignment two. You will do similar circuits. You will draw similar circuit. But what I would like to say, this is a simple introduction to a theory that we are going to cover in chapter four, which is called Thevenin. For Thevenin theory, you are going to see later on, maybe after one week, when we will start talking about that, you will see that in case of R7, for some circuits, if there is no dependent source, if I have only independent, and I would like to find R7 between these two points, I will replace the voltage source, which is independent by short circuit, and the current source, 
which is independent file of the circuit. This is what we are going to talk about in chapter four while we are talking about Thevenin equivalent. But right now we are not talking about Thevenin, I'm talking about this circuit. If you try to look to this circuit, I didn't do anything except opening this guy so I don't have five amps, short circuiting this guy, I don't have it anymore. And at that time, I can say all of these resistors are connected in. Yes, so I can add four to 16 to 15 to find the total resistance of those. And these two are connected in. Yes, so I can say that all of those are connected series and also those are connected series and the overall is connected parallel. So if you try to redraw this circuit again, you will have here 11 and then you will have 9 and you will have 10 and then this guy which is 35 and then this guy which is 4 plus 16 plus 15 it is uh, 45 35 yes 20 plus 15 it will be 35 so you are looking for the volt for the equivalent resistance between e and b again i can say that those two are connected in parallel and the total will be half of one of them because they are equal so 35 times 35 over 35 plus 35 at the end this guy will be represented by here i have resistor 11 and this guy is a and this guy is b and I have nine, and then I have half of, uh, I forgot 10, I have 10 here, half of 35, which is 17.5. So this guy is 17.5. Then what is the next step? The next step is this guy is connected in series with this, in series with this, and the overall is connected in parallel with 11. So I can say RAB, is equal to 9 plus 17.5 plus 10, which is connected in parallel with 11. So this guy will be equal to, you will add up 10 plus 9, it will be 19 plus 17. So it will be 36.5, which is in parallel with, sorry, 36.5. 36.5, which is in parallel with 11. So at the end, I will have 36.5 multiplied by 11 divided by 36.5 plus 11 ohms. You can calculate this one. If you try to go back to the assignment problem, similar to this one. This guy is open circuit. This guy is replaced by short circuit. And I will not need this anymore. These two are connected in parallel. I'll have 10. Then you will follow the steps. Probably you will have five and five connected in after opening this guy. Five and five connected in series. The overall is connected in parallel with 10 which is the combination of 20 and 20. Then 60 and 20 connected in parallel with this guy, am I right? Which is considered as, because this guy is replaced by short circuit. Excuse me? For this part, if you try to look to this part, it is something like that. Yes.
this guy is 10, this guy is 5, this guy is 5, and we have this guy, so this is 60, and this is 20. Those are connected in parallel. 10 along with 5 plus 5, right? So I'll have only 5. What's going to happen to those? They are connected in series, and the overall is shortened. Am I right? So I will erase those. Right? Then you will have only this branch that has 5 connected in parallel with 45. Am I right? I have already solved it. Okay. So for the second, yes. This is what I told you. But I will teach you Norton and Thevenin equivalents. And I'll let you know if you would like to calculate R Thevenin or R Norton, but this is maybe after one week. What you have to do is one of the methods, and this is depending on my condition, which is I don't have dependent source. At that time, I will replace the open source by short circuit, and I will replace the current source by open circuit, and after that, I will try to calculate R equivalent. But this is advanced theory of the data functions. Any question, guys? Okay. Let us see problem number two. Uh, for problem number two, in the assignment, I'm telling you the current I, E, and I, B in the circuit of figure two are four and negative two. So the current I, A is equal to four. And the current I, B is negative two. If you hate dealing with negative signs, what you have to do is instead of the current is going in that direction, I will replace it by another current in opposite direction and I will use two. Or you can leave it like that. Doesn't matter. Are you seeing what I'm talking about, guys? I asked you here to calculate everything. Calculate IG. Find the power dissipated in each resistor. So you have to calculate the power in this, the power in this, the power in this, power in this, power, 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 power. So in other words, you have to calculate the current in each resistor. Because I'm asking you to calculate the power in each resistor. And after that, I asked you to calculate VG, and then I asked you to repeat solving the problem to calculate the current IA and IB if the current source is replaced by open circuit. So I asked you to repeat solving the problem if I replaced the current source by open circuit, repeat solving the problem as if it is another problem. Let us see the first part. Yes, what's your question? If I ask it directly to calculate the power dissipated in each resistor, I would like you to find the power dissipated in each individual resistor. But if I ask you to calculate the power dissipated, you can calculate our equivalent and the power dissipated in our equivalent. That's OK. So it depends on the question itself. Here, I'm asking you to calculate one by one. Power dissipated in each one. Yes. So if you would like to change this guy to be negative four and to be in opposite direction, that's fine. If you would like to change this direction to be in opposite direction and it would be positive too, that's okay. It's your problem, do whatever you want. But at the end, you have to follow what's given. But you would like to solve the problem by using a different direction, you have to change the sign. 
it's totally acceptable. Any other question? Okay, let us see how to solve such a problem. But before I start talking about that problem, I'd like to remind you by what we have already studied so far. What we have already studied is Kirchhoff's current law and voltage law. So we studied both of them and we have already learned that we can use both of them for solving any problem. For finding the current and the voltage for each patch. Then we started current divider and voltage divider. But to be honest with you, the current divider and voltage dividers are considered as special cases, or in other words, some identities, or in other words, I couldn't say um, I can use both of them for solving any problem. I can use both of them in some problems as a step for simplifying finding the current or the voltage. But current divider and voltage divider are not general rule. I can use it for solving any equation. I can use one of them as a step for solving the equation. But if I would like to calculate the voltage and the current and everything else, maybe I'll need to use KCL and KVL. Maybe, maybe not. But what I'm saying, KCL and KVL could be used for solving any problem. Ohm's law is saying I is equal to V, I, uh, I is equal to V over R total. Am I allowed to use Ohm's law for finding the current in the circuit for any circuit? The answer is it is depending on the circuit itself. If your circuit has only one voltage source, at that time I can find R total seen by that voltage source. And at that time I can say I is equal to V over R total. There is no problem. But what about if I have two sources, three sources? I couldn't say I is equal to V over R total. Why? Because at that time, I don't have only one source. I have more than one source. Which R you are looking for? Is it R seen by that source or that source? That's why it's not preferred. If I give you more than one source in the circuit to say I is equal to V over R total, which R total you are talking about? I can say I is equal to V over R total if I have only one voltage source in my circuit. One of the common mistakes is, imagine we are talking about this circuit, for example. Some of you are saying, OK, so I can say that the current in this guy is equal to the voltage divided by these two resistors because we are talking about that loop. It's totally wrong. I couldn't say I here is equal to V over the summation of those. Because I have this guy. And I have other resistors. This is one of the common mistakes, like for example, some of you are saying, OK, so if you are talking about this circuit. I can say the current in this source is equal to V over the summation of 60 and 20. It's totally wrong. Why? Because the equivalent R seen between these two points is not equal to the summation of those. It's something else. So please pay your attention and don't make that mistake. Don't say for that I can say I is equal to V over R total. And then you are looking for R total at the summation of those. No. I can say I is equal to V over R total if I have only one voltage source in the circuit. But if I have one more than one voltage source, I couldn't find R total seen by that source or that source. I have to use Thevenin or Norton to find the equivalent voltage source and then find the equivalent resistance, but this is another story. So if I would like to solve such a problem, what I have already learned so far, what I have learned is 
I have learned KCL and KVL. I have learned I is equal to V over R total. And I have learned the third method, which is current and voltage divider. These two identities. I have to ask myself a question. Which one should I use? It's very, very important to know, guys, from where you can start. Many of you are complaining from electric circuits. Why? Because many of you are saying we studied that course very well. But we don't know how to solve the problem. Although I know everything, I'm memorizing everything, but I don't know how to start solving the circuit. Because you are not thinking. So we are thinking right now together. How to solve such a problem? Can I say I is equal to V over R total? The answer is no, because I don't know which R total you are talking about. Number two, can I use the current divider? The answer is no, because I don't have two parallel resistors. I can distribute the current between. Can I say if I know V total, I can distribute the voltage? Actually, I don't have two resistors connected in series to distribute the voltage between them by knowing the total voltage. You will say all of those three are connected in series. Yes, but you don't know the total voltage to distribute it between them. So the only way I have already learned it so far is to use KCL and KVL. I using KCL and KVL Sometimes it is a tricky because sometimes they are leading you to write many equations and many unknowns. It should be better to minimize the number of unknowns. So let us look to that problem. Actually, he is so nice when he gave me this current and he gave me this current. Why? Because when he gave me this current, this current is the current in nine ohms, right? And this current is the current in 15 ohms, which means this current is this current. And the current that he gave me is that current. So I have this guy is negative 2 and this guy is 4. Am I right? At that time, I can start from that node. Why you are going to start from that node? Because you know two currents. For that essential node, and this node has three different branches, so it's very easy to know the current in this guy. It's very easy. It's only one unknown. Why I'm starting from that point? Because I would like to minimize my equations, my unknowns as much as I can. Once I calculated the current in five ohms, the current in five ohms is known right now and I'm, I'm going to use it as known quantity not a known quantity and this is the difference between two students one is writing equations and complaining and saying the test is too long and another one is thinking a little bit and he is trying to simplify everything and at that time he will solve the test in the required time so if you would like to find the current in this guy, you will say summation the current for that node is equal to zero. This guy is entering and this guy is leaving. And maybe this guy is leaving or entering, it doesn't matter. It depends on your direction, which direction you like. Hitting the nodes or leaving the nodes. Okay, if this guy is leaving the nodes, I will call it I, for example. So summation I is equal to zero for that node, I can say negative two negative 4, negative i is equal to 0. Then I can calculate i. Am I right? Because this guy is entering, so I will put it with its sign, and these two are leaving, so they will have negative signs. Then I will be able to calculate i. Now, if I calculated i, can I use this loop for calculating vg? Yes, I know this current. I know this voltage and I know the current in this guy so I can calculate the voltage drop so I can say summation the voltage here is equal to zero. What your signs? 
So I'll have positive, negative. Here I'll have positive, negative. I will go to that direction. So the second sign positive, negative, negative, and positive. Oh, sorry. Yes. And then I will write my equation, and then I will calculate which unknown. Vg. At that time, Vg is given. I have already calculated. See the simplicity. And instead of writing submission the voltage for each loop is equal to zero, submission the current for each node is equal to zero, I'll leave the problem for me to solve it. And you will lose some marks. So the next step is you would like to calculate the current in this guy and the current in this guy and the current in this guy. Only these three different currents and the current in this guy as well. So what's your opinion, guys? Can I say submission of the current at that node is equal to zero? Yes, I can. But if I try to think, if this current is given, no. If this current is given, no. So I will write one equation and two unknowns. Do you like that? I will try to see maybe I have one equation and one unknown to simplify the circuit. OK, I can say submission of the voltage here is equal to zero. Oh, I don't know this current. I don't know this current. So again, I have two equations and two, uh, one equation and two unknowns. What about submission? The voltage here is equal to zero. Oh, one unknown, like what you are saying. In this loop, I know the current in this branch. And I know the current in this branch, but I don't know this guy. Based on that, it is preferred to say submission the voltage for this loop is equal to zero. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? Then by doing that, I can calculate the current in this guy. Excellent. If you calculated the current in this guy, what is the next step? Do whatever you want. You can say submission the voltage here is equal to zero. Vg, you have already calculated it. And you know the current in this guy, you can find the current in this guy. Am I right? We have already solved the problem. But what's going to happen if I didn't pay my attention to these things? Nothing. That's OK. You will write some equations, maybe three equations and three unknowns, and then you will try to substitute in them. But you will reach to the solution, but after maybe like five more steps. Yes. Yes. After finding VG, you will say submission the voltage here is equal to zero. You will be able to find this current, right? And you know this current, right? And you know this current, and you know this current. You can use this node or this node by saying submission the current is equal to zero. The only unknown is IG. You can calculate it. Any question for the second problem, the assignment? Yes. I'm um, saying submission the voltage in this loop is equal to zero. This current is given. This current is calculated. I can find this current. Yes. Can you use, you use the second sign when you're doing the voltage loop? And sometimes you can use the first sign, it doesn't matter. Yes. But how do you know what sign to put at which end? You can choose whichever you want. It doesn't matter because at the end, what you have, you have equation equal to zero. So if you choose the first sign, for example, this equation is equal to zero, and you would like to choose the second sign, multiply this equation by negative one. Yes. Nothing will be changed. How do you decide what sign you put? And what side you put in the back? As you like. It doesn't matter. If you decided to choose the second sign, see here, I'm rotating in that direction. So I'm moving in that way. So this is the first sign, and this is the second sign. You got what I mean? Yes. This is your question? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Once you get to the 5 ohm, instead of going negative positive, you go positive negative. Yes. And then positive negative. Yes. Negative. 
OK, because of the direction of the current, let me. Make this guy bigger a little bit. And let me erase that. Right now, what we have, we assume that direction, right? So based on that, I can say this is positive, this is negative. You agree? Now, this is the direction of the current. So what did this sign? What did this sign? Then you will choose any direction, clockwise or anti-clockwise. If I choose this direction, clockwise, so I'm moving from this to this. So the second sign is positive. And then the second sign is negative. And then the second sign is negative. And then the second sign is positive. Why here I have different compared to this? Because of two opposite direction for the current in the same loop. Got it? Yeah. OK. Any other question, guys? Yes. When you are moving from negative to positive, the second sign is positive. So I'm putting positive 100 if I choose the second sign. So I will write positive 100, negative 5 times this current, negative VG, positive 15 times IA. OK, any other question for that problem? OK. I don't mind to solve the assignment with you, but I would like you to learn. Yes. Because I assume that that direction for the current. Yes, you can assume anything else. Yes, yes. I asked you which direction you like, and I think one here said, leaving the nodes. That's why I bought that direction. You can assume any direction if you don't know the direction of the counts. Any other question? OK, let us move to problem number three. But before moving to problem number three, let me go back to the tutorial because this problem in the tutorial is similar to this problem. It is the same problem. But what I did only, I changed the numbers. But it is the same problem like what you are seeing. So I will solve problem number. Uh, I will solve problem number two in the tutorial, and I'll leave problem number three to you to solve it because it is the same. I changed only the numbers. Let us see this problem. Here he is telling me. For the circuit shown in figure two, calculate I delta, calculate VO, and then show that the power developed as a magnitude is equal to the power absorbed as a magnitude. And then repeat solving the problem to calculate I delta and VO. If it I delta current source is replaced by an open circuit, and calculate the voltage across the open circuit. So let us draw this circuit. Question two. OK. So what he would like to do here, he told me solve this problem for calculating IO and VO and then the power in the circuit. So I would like to solve such a problem for calculating. I'll make it bigger a little bit because I'd like to be able to draw inside the circuit. So what do you want to do? He is telling me, can you please solve this circuit for finding the current in each branch? Why for finding the current and the power in each branch? Because I'd like you to calculate the power. So from where should I start? I'm seeing three different loops. 
and one, two, three, four nodes. How many nodes do we have? Essential nodes. I have one, two, three, and four, but actually this is considered as one node, right? Because in between these two, there is no resistor or anything connected. So if I consider these two as one node, it is acceptable. Are you seeing what I'm talking about, guys? Now, let us say summation the voltage for this loop is equal to zero. Maybe submission the current for this node is equal to zero. Maybe submission the current for this node is equal to zero. But wait, wait a second. Should you say first submission the current is equal to zero or submission the voltage is equal to zero? Before I start solving the problem, I have to think a little bit. If I said submission the current for the load with load is equal to zero, what is the current in 20 I sin? Crash. What is the current in this graph? Is it given? No. So what should I do? I will ask you. So I'm injecting extra unknowns in the problem. I'm adding extra unknowns. So is it a good idea by starting saying submission the current for the front wave to is equal to zero? Why no? Because I don't know the current in which branch. I don't know the current in this guy. You know, guys, I'm thinking with you and I'm, I'm giving you some like simple notes. I'm giving you my experience on how to deal with these problems. So it's better, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. So it's better not to start saying submission the current here is equal to zero. Why? You don't know the current of this guy. You are going to assume it. And the problem also is you don't know the current of this guy. So you will assume it also. Imagine you are adding two unknowns. And the problem before I started doing anything. So, what about this guy? Oh, this is I sigma and this is 8I delta, but again, I don't know this guy. So, it is not a good idea by starting saying submission the current for each node is equal to zero. Maybe I'll need that later on, but right now, I'd like to start by very simple equation. Why? Because if I started by simple equation and I try to calculate at least one unknown, I'll be happy. I have already found something. So I will start saying submission of voltage here is equal to zero. Do I need to assume anything in this loop? Everything is given. So if I said submission of voltage here is equal to zero, my friend who was asking about the direction of the voltage or the signs for the voltage. If I delta is going down, so I will have here positive and negative. Then you will say summation the voltage for loop number one is equal to zero. So this is the second sign. This is the second sign and this is the second sign. So I can say 100 plus 20 i sigma minus 10 i delta is equal to zero. I forgot to ask you which method should I use for solving the problem at the beginning. I forgot. But if you try to think, how many methods did you teach us? You taught us KCL and KVL, and this is what I'm applying. You taught us current divider and voltage divider. Is it a good idea to use them here? No. You taught us I is equal to V over I R total. Can I do that here? No. It's better to have everything in your mind and start thinking which one should I use? This is very, very important. So I have one equation in how many unknowns in two unknowns? I sigma and I delta. What is the next step? Maybe I'll say submission the current for this node is equal to zero. 
again, you are going to add a known here and another unknown here. And I don't like that. Wait, let us lock to this loop. If you try to lock to this loop, do I have to assume anything? So it's better to lock to loop number two. Summation V is equal to zero for loop two. And then you were right. I'm moving clockwise here. So the second sign will be positive at that time. My friend in the back was wearing T-shirt, red T-shirt. So the second sign, because I'm moving clockwise, the second sign here is positive. And the second sign for this, and the second sign for this, negative. So I'll have negative, and I'll have negative. And then I will start writing my equation by saying 10 I delta minus 5 I sigma minus what? Minus 20 I sigma or minus V O. It's better to write it minus 20 I sigma. Why not minus VO? Because VO is unknown. And if you saw like three unknowns, you would be scared. I don't like you to be scared. So at that time, I have only two equations in how many unknowns I can solve them and continue. No need to continue writing the equations. It's better if you are able to simplify your equations. Go ahead and simplify them. So right now. I have equation number one and I have equation number two. I'd like to solve these two equations. So if you try to simplify equation number one, sorry, number two more, I can say 10 I delta. Minus 25 I sigma equals zero. And then based on that, I can say divide the whole equation by five, then I will have two and then I will have five. Then I can rewrite this equation as two I delta minus five I sigma equals zero. Then I can modify this more by writing I delta equals five over two I sigma. Am I right? OK, now it became very easy because I'm going to substitute from this into equation number one. So if I did that. I will have 100 plus 20 I sigma. Minus 10 I delta, which is 5 over 2 I sigma. This guy is equal to zero. Then you will have 100 plus 20. I sigma minus 25 I sigma equals zero. Then I can say 100 equals 5 I sigma. Then I can say I sigma equals 100 over 5, which is 20 amps. Based on that, I can calculate I delta which is equal to 5 over 2 multiplied by 20, which is 50. Any question? Yes. You can use whatever you want. I told you before, use which loop you are seeing. It's more easier. I'm thinking that this one is is maybe there is another equation. If I wrote it, it will simplify more, but I'm thinking with you. You can use whichever you want. Yes. So I have already calculated I sigma, which is 20 and I delta, which is 50. So I sigma, it is equal to 20. So this guy will be five times 20. So this guy will be equal to 100 volts. And this guy will be 8 times I delta, which is 
I don't remember. I delta 50. So times 50. So this guy will be 400. 400 watt amps. Now, I think it became more easier because you know the current in this guy, you know the current in this guy, you know this voltage, and you know this voltage as well. So this guy is substituted by 20 multiplied by I sigma, which is 20, right? So it is 400 V. Now, what else do you want? I think I know this guy, I can calculate VO. VO is equal to I sigma times 20. So VO equals 20 I sigma, which is equal to 20 times 20, which is 400 volts. Now, he asked me to calculate what else? He asked me, let me go back to the problem. He asked me to show that the power developed is equal to the power absorbed. And this is the story. I have to show that the power developed is equal to the power absorbed by calculating the voltage and the current for each branch. I have to calculate the voltage and the current for each branch. Now, we have already calculated I delta. We have already calculated I sigma, but you have to calculate the current here. You have to calculate the current in this guy. You have to calculate the voltage between these two points. Right? So for calculating the voltage across it, I delta, what should I do? I will say summation the voltage here is equal to zero. If I said summation the voltage in this loop is equal to zero, let me print this and go put it back here down because oops. so I would like to put it here to be able to write more. So what am I going to do right now? I'm going to calculate the current in each branch. If you try to look to this circuit, you would like to calculate the current in this guy, the current in this guy, and the voltage between these two points. So if you would like to calculate the voltage between these two points, do you know the direction of the voltage? Or do you know the signs, positive, negative, or you don't know? I don't know. Yes, I will assume it. So, can I assume this guy active element or passive element? Because maybe one of these sources, maybe two, maybe three, are considered as passive elements. Am I right? Maybe all of them are active. I don't know. But maybe one of them or two or three are passive. So for if I delta, you have to consider it as to consider it as active or passive element. As you like, it doesn't matter. You like to consider it passive? Okay, that's fine. I'll consider it passive. But if it became active, the voltage will be with negative sign. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? I consider it anything. So if I consider 8i delta as passive element, what is the sign here for the voltage? Positive or negative? What is the sign for this? Please don't ask me why did you put positive and negative? Don't say why you didn't write negative and positive. Write whatever you want. If you assume wrong sign, you will get negative answer. But that's OK. So I will say the voltage for this guy, for example, it is whichever name you like, V1. Stop writing. Yes. 
So V1. Now, I will say summation of the voltage for this loop is equal to zero, which is loop number three. I will go in that direction. The second sign is positive. The second sign is negative. The second sign is negative. So summation V is equal to zero for loop number three. At that time, I will say 20 times I sigma or VO because I have already calculated it 400. Minus. V1 minus 50 equals zero. Then I can say V1 equals. V1 equals. Yes. Oh, it's positive sign. So my assumption is right or wrong. What about if it is wrong? I'll give negative sign. I and I will not be scared. That's OK. I know in advance. This this is just assumption. Maybe it is wrong. Maybe it's right. Now. I would like to know the uh, voltage. So the current in this guy. How to calculate the current in this guy? I'll assume it. Which direction, left or right? The current in this guy. Which direction you like, left or right? Right? So I will have this direction. This guy is considered as, for example, I1. So assume that this is node number one. Summation I is equal to zero for node one. I1 is hitting and I sigma is leaving and 8 I delta is leaving. So I can say I1 minus I sigma minus 8 I delta equals zero. What's I sigma? I have already calculated it. It's 20. So based on that, I can say I1 minus 20 minus 8 I delta, which is 400 equals zero. So I1 equals 420 amps. OK, so based on your assumption, this guy is considered as active or passive element. Yes, passive. Because the current is from positive to negative. So this guy is considered as passive. What about this guy? It's considered as passive. What about this guy? This is the direction of the current. It's passive. Oh. All of them are passive. What's going on? I hope I didn't make any mistake. Let us see. Then I know this current. I know this current. We would like to find this current. Which direction you like? Left or right? Okay. If you choose right, this guy is equal to I2, and I'm supporting you choosing right. Why? Because this is the only active element in the circuit. I don't have anyone else. So if you assume the wrong direction, you will get negative sign. So it is clear right now, but that's OK. You can assume anything you would like. So I will say submission the current for Newton is equal to zero. So submission I is equal to zero for new two. I2 is heading and I delta is leaving and I1 is leaving, which is equal to zero. Based on that, I can say I2 is equal to I delta, which is 50 plus I1, which is 420. So this guy will be equal to 470 amps. Anything else I need? I think no. I have already calculated everything. Now, based on this current, these two are considered as. Yes, so this guy is considered as active and this guy is considered as active. So if you would like to calculate the total power generated, it will be the power in 120 I sigma. So I can say the power generated will be equal to be generated 
negative, don't forget. Summation VI. Am I right? This guy will be equal to negative 470 multiplied by this guy plus this guy because they have the same current as if I'm adding these two sources, right? So I have 100 plus 400. This will be equal to negative 470 times. Can anyone calculate it? I will calculate it right now. So 470 times 500, right? So it will be 23500 watts. I have to prove that the power in this guy plus 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 the power in this guy is equal to the same value that I have already calculated. Unless there is a mistake. Any question, guys? Yes. Which one? It depends on what I have here. I have negative, positive. This is voltage. Which one? Any one of, of, of which sources? Which sources? Which sources you are talking independent or dependent? Yeah, OK. You have to calculate the voltage. So you have to calculate the voltage like what we did here. We calculated the voltage across this guy. And then we will calculate the power in this guy V times I. OK, so I repeat the same story, but I don't like to waste your time by calculating everything. Is it clear right now how to continue finding the rest? So the rest is you will calculate power consumed or dissipated. Power consumed is equal to summation all power. Summation all power in all passive elements. OK, guys, and it should equal to three, two, three, five, zero, zero, zero. If not, there is a mistake. Any question, guys, for that problem? Um, I have a question. Yes. So up top, you chose um, one from the most on the right. Yes. So this um, one. One of them says passive. Yeah. So the one passive, you get a negative 350 volts. I uh, will get negative 350. Uh, so how did you know? I assumed any direction. And then I found V is equal to positive 350. Based on that, I call this guy as a passive element. Because the direction of the current is from positive to negative. I don't know if it is passive or active. I don't know. So you don't know for specific. Um, for this guy. What I did, I assumed that this is positive negative V. And then I tried to calculate it from this loop. And I found its value is positive. So this is the right sign for V. Based on that, I found the current is from positive to negative. It means this guy is passive. Because if the current is from positive to negative, you are talking about passive. If it is if the current is from negative to positive, you are talking about active element. This problem is similar to problem number three in your assignment. No difference. Similar to this one, I change it only the numbers. Any question? And then for the second part, I'm asking you to replace it I delta by open circuit and then repeat solving the problem. I have already solved it the hardest part. The next will be very easy. Let us see problem number four. 
Similar to problem number four, I don't remember if I have one here in the tutorial or not. Yeah, maybe I can say three and four, they are similar. Three and four. So which one do you like me to solve it? Three or four? Four, you are smart. Yes. Why four? Because three is very easy. You would like to trick us. I here is equal to V over R total. It's, it's very simple. You will calculate R total. We know how to do that. So these two are connected in. And the overall of those is connected with 4N. And the overall is connected with 30N. And the overall of those with 8N. And the overall of those with 60N. And then you will say I is equal to V over R2. It's very easy. What about number four? Number four is similar, but the only difference is you are going to calculate this current. But you don't need this current. I would like to calculate this current. And this is the problem. Let us take this problem and start solve it and then I'll go come back to your question after solving it. So question number four. My son is calling me. Maybe he would like me to buy something. Anyway, so. I would like to calculate IO. Which method? Should I use for calculating IO? Do you like to have a break or continue? Break, if you would like to have a break, raise your hand. If you would like to continue, raise your hand. I think continue, and then we will see if you would like to have a break. So if I would like to solve such a problem, what should I do? Please. Try to, to learn from me how to think in solving a problem. Find our equivalent. So let me think of you, my friend. If I would like to solve this problem, is it more easier to use this electrical? Let me see how many moves. One, two, three, four. How many moves? One, two, three, four. Oh, so I'm expecting eight equations and eight and not. What do you want? You would like to calculate the current I and O. So I think the easiest way is to simplify the circuit first. If you are able, yes, I am able. I can say eight is connected in series with twelve, and the overall is connected in parallel with sixty, and the overall is connected in series with twenty, and the overall is connected in parallel with one forty, and the overall is connected. And series with way two. Then I will simplify the part. And then I will rebuild the circuit. Since I didn't ask you to calculate anything related to 8 ohms or 12 or 140, you need to keep them. And since I'm using the voltage for these words is equal to zero, at this, I ask you to calculate the current of the voltage for these words. So, what am I going to do right now is. I'm going to simplify those series in parallel with this. So I will have 8 plus 12 in parallel with 60, and this guy will be equal to 20 times 60 divided by 20 plus 60. Anyone calculate this number? Excuse me? 15. OK, why you are angry? <laughs> so 15 is a series with 20. So I can say 20, the result of this is in series with 20. And the overall is in parallel with 140. Anyone is not following me? You didn't see it, it is hidden. So this guy will be equal to 35 times 140 divided by 35 plus 140. Can you please calculate this guy? 
I'm depending on you. 28, is it right? Anyone checked? Okay, now this is 28 connected with 22 and series or parallel. Yes, so I can say 22 plus 28 will be equal to 50, not 40. So I will have this guy and this guy. This guy is 50 and this guy is 75 and he would like to find IO here and this guy is 10. This guy is 240 volt. Then 50 and 75 are in parallel and the overall is in series with 10. So I can say our total equals 50 in parallel with 75 plus 10. So this guy will be equal to 50 times 75 over 50 plus 75 plus 10. Can anyone calculate that? Over all 40? Okay, anyone check? Yeah. Then based on that, I can find this current, which is I1. So I1 is equal to 240 divided by 40, which is how to find this current. Yes, using the current divider. I can say that I O is equal to I1 multiplied by which resistor? 50 over 75 plus 50, which is this guy six. Can anyone calculate this number? Can anyone check? 2.4, okay, thank you. Is it easy? Yes. Any question for that problem? Yes. The question was calculate. Find the current. Where is it? Find IO and the power dissipated in 140. Yes, after that I would like to find the power dissipated in 140. So for finding the power dissipated in 140, I have to calculate the current. But I'm, what I'm asking about. Any question for that part? Any question for that part? Now, let us go back to the problem. He would like to calculate the power in this guy. He would like to calculate the power of 140. So you have to calculate the current in this guy. Or you can calculate the voltage, whichever is more easier for you. If you try to look to this circuit, after simplifying it, I found 140 is connected in parallel with all of those. And after that, I said 140 is in parallel and the overall is in series with 22. Just one second. I can redraw that again. Here, this guy is 240 and this guy is 10. And this guy is 75. Then this guy was 22. And do you remember what is the value of this guy? It was 140 in parallel with that, which is 28. Can you please find this voltage? Yes, I can. Or I can find the current. So if you try to find this current, I can find it by the current divider, right? Or I can say the current in this guy, which is I1, equals the current in this part. So I1, equals 6 multiplied by 
75 divided by 75 plus 50. Could you please calculate this current? I think it is 3.6. Could you please confirm? Yes. Now, can I calculate this voltage? V, it is equal to 28 times I1. So please multiply 28 times 3.6. One hundred what? One hundred point eight volts. Now, this voltage is the voltage between these two points. Am I right? Excuse me. This one hundred point eight, right? Okay. Now, the voltage between these two points is one hundred point eight. Let us go up a little bit. Which is this voltage? Am I right? So it means the voltage between these two points is 100.8 volt. Can you find the power in this guy? It is 100 square point eight divided by 140 because the power is equal to V square over R. Am I right? Because all of those are connected in parallel with this. So at that time, I can say the power in 140 ohms equals V square divided by 100, uh, sorry, divided by 140. Which is equal to 100.8 over 140, this guy squared. This is what is. Or if you want, and instead of doing that, you can distribute the currents. And you have this branch, and you have this branch, draw two parallel branches, and use the current divider again. But you don't need, because you know the voltage, and those two branches are connected in parallel. So I can use the voltage for each one square divided by the resistance, it will give me the power. Did I answer your question? Yes? Okay, you have a question. Yes, you asked. Yeah. I answered it. Yes, right. Yeah. We have 50 and 75. The bottom one? This one, actually, those two are considered as 50. And this is this is what I did. Yes, they are connected in series. I can consider them as one resistor. They have the same current. Right now, I have this branch connected in parallel with this. I said two parallel branches. OK, any question, guys? Yes. To calculate what? Because 28 ohms is the equivalent resistance for all of those. And I don't like to calculate the power in this part. I would like to calculate the power in this one only. And 140. Any other question? Let us move to the next part. Problem number five. Problem number five actually in the tutorial I'm asking you to find the current in 33 ohms, which is the current in this guy. So let us copy this and move back to the tutorial solution. So question number five. I would like you to solve for finding the current in which one for finding the current in this guy, right? How to solve such a problem? How to find the current? Can I use KCL and KVL? Yes, you can, but it will take a long time, right? To solve it. Can I use the current divider or the voltage divider? It's not preferred because 
I don't know a total voltage and I have two resistors connected in series or three. I don't I don't have that. So what should I do? Yeah, so find R total and then divide V over R total. But if you try to find R total, you will face a problem for finding R total. Like my friend is saying, we have Delta connection. But before I start talking about that, let me go back to the assignment. Here, I asked you to find the equivalent RAB, which is between those. Are you seeing this part is hard? For finding RAB? This problem is, which one you like me to go over it? This one? Or this one or this one? This one? Okay. B or C? C. These two are connected in. The overall of those two is connected with this one. The overall of those is connected with 27. The overall is connected with this then I have only one branch by the same way. These two are connected in with this guy, the overall with this guy, at the end I will have that. This is EB, right? This one with this one in, parallel and the overall will be one branch like that so all of those are connected in yes let me go over this also because my friend is not happy so these two are connected in these two are connected in the overall of those with this one the overall of those with this one the overall of those with 75. OK. The overall of those with 10. The overall of those with 60. OK. Then the overall of those with the overall of this. Then I have only one resistor connected in parallel with this. Connected in series with this and series with this. Is it easy? Yes. Then here, for this part, I asked you for this circuit, could you please calculate IO? Actually, this is very, very easy. We have already solved it one like this during the class. Do you still remember? These two are connected then. It will give me three, right? Connected with two N. So I'll have five. Then I have delta up, down, convert one of them to be star, and then find our total. And this is what I'm going to do with this problem. This is what I'm going to do right now, similar to this. So let us see this problem. I would like to calculate this current. So these two are connected in. OK. Now, what else? Can I say 50 with 40 series or parallel? No. It is delta. And what about this? It's delta as well. So what I have to do is I will convert delta to star. So for solving such a problem, what I have to do I have to convert delta to star for one of the problems. Oh, for one of these models. Which one you like to convert? You would like to convert the big one? OK, so let us see. I will draw this guy. And this guy and this guy. And then. This guy is equal to what? 
it is equal to 40 times 60 divided by the summation. So imagine, for example, this is RA, this is RB, and this is RC. So RA equals 40 times 60 divided by 40 plus 60 plus 52. And RB equals 40 times 32 over 40 plus 60 plus 152. And by the same way, I would say RC equals 52 times 60 divided by 40 plus 60 plus 52. What is the next step? Please, it is this, it is this, it is this. If I try to do that, I will have 33, and then I will have 50. This guy is 10. Please pay your attention while I'm drawing. So I will cancel this, cancel this, cancel this. And I have this guy, and this guy, this guy is RB, this guy is RA, this guy is RC, and this guy is 30, this guy is 10, this is 40, and this is 240 volts. Now, what is the next step? What should I do? Simplify again. But the problem is those two are connected in series. R A and Han and Tin. Oh, so this is delta. Am I right? I will convert again delta to star. So if you try to convert delta to star, let me draw by using another color. So I will have this. I will have this. And I will have this. Imagine this is R1, R2, R3. So R1 equals what? 50 plus RB, right? Multiplied by 10 divided by 50 plus RB plus 10 plus. Uh, what is this resistor value? RA, yes. And then calculate R2 and R3 by the same way. Then after doing that, please cancel this, 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 and this. And then redraw your circuit. If you try to redraw your circuit, you will have 33. And this guy, which is R1, and this guy, which is R3, this guy, which is R2, this guy, which is 10, this is RC, this is 30, and 240. Again, I would like to calculate this guy. So those two are connected in and those three are, so I can say, 33 plus R1 plus, this is R total, 10 plus R3 connected in, C in parallel with R2 plus RC plus 30. I can calculate R total, then I is equal to 240, over R2. I forgot 40. Oh, I forgot this one. Yes, you are right. This guy is 40. So let me. Where should I put it? I will erase this guy. And I will write here 30. And this guy plus 40. 
Any question for that problem? So, any question for the assignment problems? This is assignment number two. So what I would like you to put in your mind before leaving, I'd like to mention something. So what I would like you to put in your mind, if you are solving any problem, it's very easy to deal with that problem. If you know that so far we learned three different methods. Easy and critical could be used for solving the problem. Term divider and both the divider identity are using them for some cases as some steps in the problem. And I is equal to B over R total if you have one more uh, last thing I would like to do the parents in the lab. So before leaving, please try to watch the lab video and I'd like to let you know what is needed from you for the lab. You need to connect this circuit and to apply the voltage divider theory. So we have three different resistors connected in series. I can say V1 is equal to 10 multiplied by one kilo divided by the summation. And by the same way, I can calculate V2 and V3. What's needed from your side is to calculate those values and then go to the lab, measure, and make comparison, put them in a table. They are equal or they are not equal. The calculated and the measured values. Then prove the current divider. So you will go to the lab, measure this current, this current, this current, apply six amps, and use these resistors. And then you will use the current divider to calculate the current in this guy, in this guy, in this guy. Also, you will try to connect this circuit and change for the loading, change the value of the resistor and see what's going to happen. And last, Two parts here, this is delta connection. I'm asking you to connect delta, and I think I showed you how to connect delta. Did I? In the video, and I show with you here also in the real life how to connect delta. Did I show you? So if I have three resistors like this, how to connect delta? I didn't show you. This guy by this guy, this guy by this guy, this guy by this guy, then we have that. Three different nodes. And I showed you in the video also. And then last one, I'm asking you to design. This is design part. Please watch the video. The video will have everything. But by the way, some of you were asking me during the lab time, oh, the measured value that I measured may be different than what's in the video. As you know, I was using the video in the previous year because students didn't go to the lab. So I was tricking them for some measurements and then I was asking them, please show me that the measured value that I did is different than the calculated value. This is, was one of the questions. So if you found something different in the video compared to what you measured, that's OK. Don't be scared. But try to be sure that you are measuring by using the right or the proper multimeter. Till now, some of you are mixing between voltmeter and ammeter. A meter is connected in series and the voltmeter is connected in parallel. Do you have any question for the lab? I'll see you tomorrow morning at uh, 1030. Thank you. Happy Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.